Welcome back, OCD Hi-Fi Nuts. Um, we are minutes away from turning on the rig here, my reference rig, to a configuration that is the most elaborate I've ever done in my whole career in Hi-Fi. And that is the renowned, fully active, quad amplified system. What that means is, I'll try and do this in a nutshell. Everybody knows that you've got speakers, right? You got your speakers. This is a sub, okay, separate speaker and then sub cabinet. These are MagnaPan 3.7s that are the most beautiful Maggies you've ever seen because they got my name on them. Um, but um, I'm playing with you. I just like to tease MagnaPan a little bit because some of those guys in management over there don't. I like Wendell's a good guy, the other guy, but there's somebody over there that deserves to be talked to a little bit. Okay, so um, anyway, so... Um, what this is, is okay, so you got your speakers, right? You got your speakers, you got your subs. And, um, yeah, you know, it comes from the amp normally. You got your source, it comes preamp and stuff, and it comes over to the amp, right? And then your amplifier makes it louder, okay, and it sends it over to the speaker. And then in the back of the speaker, because this is a three-way, it's got a woofer, a mid-range, and a tweeter. There's something inside here, a, pa a bunch of capacitors and resistors and stuff, inductors, that divide up the frequency, right? The lows go to the woofer, the mids go to the mid-range, the highs go to the tweeter. Okay, but this thing that's back behind there, it's passive, meaning it's just a bunch of capacitors, inductors, and resistors. Those things are problematic. They cause all sorts of delays and phase shift and errors and all this crap that just makes them really a pain in the ass, okay? They work in the end, but people are always compromising to make them work right and doing all these things and they all talk about you know how nice it would be to you know the, to have first order everything or just no cross so crossover list design would be so cool well okay so the way you make a crossover list without having the perfect drivers that complement each other and roll exactly where the other one picks up yada yada you need to take that out and this is just such a cooler way to do it anyways so it's so much more efficient then what you do is You've got your source. Your source goes, okay, there's a computer up top. The source goes down to the crossover on the bottom. This is a four-way. Okay, so what that means is your music signal comes down to this crossover box. And then in here, it divides the music signal up into four different bands of frequency operation. That means you've got the low, you've got the mid, or you've got the low, you've got the low mid, you've got the high mid, and you've got the high. Okay, so those are the four sections. One, two, three four low low mid high mid high okay that's four different areas down here it divides into four different areas it sends four over there four over there which means well it well, actually sends it to the amp and then the amp sends it over there okay so which means your amplifier that's amplifying the low frequency it's only receiving low frequency this is the coolest part is that this amp now instead of receiving all the whole bandwidth of the music, 20 hertz down low, all the way up to 20K up, up high, it's only receiving what it's going to amplify, which is 20 hertz up to like, you know, 60 hertz. That little pocket or that little envelope of frequency is already been sectioned out over here, and it's going before the amp. That's huge. After the amp, it's a different story, man. It's totally inefficient. Before the amp, now the amp is only amplifying its little proper envelope of frequency, so it, it, it doesn't have to worry about anything else. Now, when you use the other style with passive, that means you send the amp 20 to 20. It goes over to your crossover 20 to 20, and then it, and then it divvies it up in a filter that turns everything to heat and, like... Like you, you send it high. You, I send the highs to here, and then at the back of this, of this, uh, the subwoofer, it just it, it blocks them. It blocks the highs. So it's and it turns into heat. It's it's stupid. It's like, why don't you just not send it highs? And that's what I'm doing here. That's what the active crossover. It doesn't send it highs over here in the mids. It does not send it highs or lows. It it only gets the low mid because this has chosen. I've set low mid here, and and the amplifier for this section right here only amplifies low mid. So it's totally efficient for the amps. Everything gets its proper ideal frequency. There is, it's the most efficient way you can possibly hook up an, 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 an audio system, but it's totally tweaky and it's totally elaborate. And I mean, okay, so look, let me give you an idea of this. Back over here. Okay, so here is how the cables are coming into the speaker. 
Down here I have a crossover that I've made. This is a passive crossover. This is the thing that you kind of want to eliminate. But I left it here because I'm going to run the tweeter through here. The tweeter is just going to go only go through the tweeter part and it's going to pop out the other end and then it's going to go to the tweeter and the panel. Now the reason I do that is because this will protect my tweeter. If any wackadoo stuff comes from upstream, it's going to protect it. It's going to give it a little protection against snappage because this is a ribbon tweeter and it's super delicate and super easy to snap. I mean, if you, um, if you, uh, uh, just because, because see, you're ho hooking the amplifier directly to the ribbon tweeter and then just going straight over to the back tap of an amp with nothing in between. It's like, Ooh, you're taking risk. Any little pop when you turn the thing on, if it doesn't have a mute circuit and you just press the button to turn it on and it goes, pop, it just makes that little snap thing. It'll, it'll break your tweeter. So, um, so that's why I leave, I leave the passive in for the tweeter only. Okay, normally you just take that out. And then these two, the mid, or the high mid and the low mid, are going to go, they go back over to their own amplifier. Okay, so I've got, we have four, because it's four sections, there's four amplifier channels per side. Okay, so the lows down here, they go to the Jeff Roland amp. This is one channel. This is a stereo amp. One of the channels, 350 watts, uh, there's two channels in here, 350 watts each. Okay, so this, uh, th one of the channels, the, the 350 watts, goes to this subwoofer tower, okay? The second 350 watts out of this Roland goes to the woofer in the panel, okay, or the, the low mid. The um, Up there on, underneath the server, you see that one with the black cables going in? That is a Coda 50 watt per channel Class A solid state amp. Because it's solid, because it's a stereo amp and I don't have two of them, I need to put it in the middle. I'm really short one mono because I have it out for demo. Someone's listening. Um, so normally I'd have the stack right here. I'd have three amps and it would be, um, or actually one stereo amp and then two monos would be four channels. So I'm using the mid, the channel from the Coda over there is coming and that's, that's going to be the high mid, okay, in, 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 the, um, in the panel. And then the Vivace right here, um, this is a class D. This thing is the sickest amp. Ugh. Man, if you, you got to hear this thing, okay? It's quite possibly the best sounding amplifier I've ever heard. Um, it uses new technology, and the thing is insane, and I still haven't figured it out, and I have to spend more time getting to know this thing because it very well might change audio as I know it, um, as all, for, for any of us. This thing is doing the tweeter duty. I've got that. It's 100 watts per channel. It's, it's obviously it, it's a 100, 100 watt monoblock. It's more than I need, but it doesn't matter. It operates at low um, uh, volume as well. Um, and that is going to power this right here. Okay, the tweeter. Um, the whole tweeter. So the tweeter goes down to like 2250. So anything 2250 hertz and above is going to be all vivace. Okay. Um, and, and if you look, you see, I mean, it's a, it's a whole bunch of cables. Okay, because I've got I've got four different um, pairs of interconnects coming off. Let's go back over here. Four different pairs of interconnects. Um, if you can see down by the bottom there, there they are. Four different pairs of XLRs all going out to the different amps. Uh, um, um, you know the low, low, high, or low mid, high mid, all that. Um, there's the, the the source coming out are coming out of the DAC right there. Those two, they're my my main left and right, and they they go in down here at the main uh, the, the main. Uh, See if I can get that there. Yeah, left and right input, which is right there. And then over there, those are all outputs. And then, um, and that's that. This is the server up here. So we've got the Ethernet going in. And um, there they are. And, uh, and, the, and the USB coming out. Oh, thank God I saw this. I can turn this on now. Okay. Because that would I would have been going like, where's the server? I can't see it on the internet. I can't see it on the network. It's not showing up on the, on the LAN. And it's because it wasn't, I had to unplug it, and then when I plugged it back in, it didn't turn itself on. Okay. So now I have these things precariously um, set on uh, the cables on top of one another using, using a double layer of uh, cable elevators that are static dissipative. Um, so they will hold all, all the, the cables coming over. So, um, okay, so when we get this thing fired up, it should be heaven. Um, I hope it doesn't explode. That would suck. Um, the last time I tried the quad amp, I blew both tweeters because I didn't have protection in and, um, and I just turned the damn thing on and it made that little snap, the little thing, the little tick that it makes when you turn it on sometimes took the tweeters out. So, um, I replaced them and I figured, well, while I'm replacing the tweeters, why don't I just redo the whole thing and put a nice, you know, new baffle on there made out of nice plywood. It's gorgeous. Put some, um, polished aluminum caps on the sides turned it into a piece of uh, beauty 
Uh, and actually, you would not believe how much better they sound. They sound way better. A lot more bass comes out of them. Um, so anyways, okay, so I'm going to get back to it. Uh, I've still got to put one foot under there. Everything's on isolation. If you look at this, I've got everything on isolation. Um, that's the, you know, to the amp all the way down. Beep, 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 beep. Every single one of these has isolation underneath it. All the way up the stack, you can see over there, Vivace. Everything is up on isolation. So um, we're ready to rock. All the cables are up on elevators. Um, this should be incredible. This is the next step, okay? This is the next step. Um, so I'm going to change it, and then I'll be back for the final vid.